It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thank you for joining us, my friends. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. You can see I have the sunglasses on. Just a bright, sunny day. So let me ask you something. Um, there's something that you don't want to see happen, uh, and that's a fire in your home, or if you get into a bad accident. There's a fire in your home, you want to make sure that you get the best possible equipment coming to your home, train people who are able to take care of your problem, and hopefully save as many people, pets, or whatever in, that, in your home. It's something that we don't ever want to see happen, but it's like insurance. You have insurance, and you hope you never have to use it. Well, in the case of the Humane Fire Department, they have funds coming in, yes, but there's also a need for equipment, there's a need for training. There's a need for things that when they come to your home or place of business, they're prepared and they do the best and they have to move quickly. So in order to do that, they have to do some fundraising. One of the things they've done this year is a car cruise. And for a little bit, in a little bit, we're gonna to talk to uh, Dave Clues and Bob Lynn and find out how that went. But once again, I'd like to remind you that there, it's an all-volunteer fire department and a company, and it's important that when they come to your place, they're prepared, just like, God forbid, you need an ambulance. You don't want them to come in a broken down ambulance without equipment or whatever they need. You want to make sure that they have the best trained people and the best possible equipment to save your lives. So today, we're going to talk about, you know, why is it important to have these fundraisers and how do they start uh, raising money that's so much needed. We're going to find that out right now. So as I said, my friends, you know, uh, if some unfortunate thing happens, particularly if you have a fire uh, in your home or wherever, or if there's a bad accident, you certainly want to have the best qualified people coming and you want to make sure that the best equipment's coming uh, and as quickly as they can. In order to do that, uh, you have to have trained people, as I said, and great equipment. And we're here at the Humane Fire Company, uh, and they just recently had a major fund drive. And it's no, the um, event that they had is no stranger. It was the car cruise that's been happening here in northeastern Pennsylvania for many years. Uh, Dave Clues was one of the people that has been with the car cruise for many, many years. And uh, let him tell the story. Uh, Dave, first of all, thanks for coming on the show again. Thanks for ordering this beautiful day. Very seldom do I wear my sunglasses, so they can't see my beautiful eyes, but what can I say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't laugh. Uh, no comment. Yeah. Dave, let's, we're, we're talking, I opened the show talking about the importance of, God forbid you should have a fire or an accident, and you, you certainly, you call for help, and you want to make sure you get the best equipment, the best qualified people coming, you know, to, to, to take care of the need that, that they're going to encounter. The car cruise has always been something that I know has been wonderful for the community, okay? Um, let's go back to how, uh, I guess Jerry Enders would probably have a, um, some input in this as well. How did the car cruise start? Well, it started you know, over 25 years ago. There was a local group that uh, would raise funds for various city things, primarily back then, if my memory serves me, it was for the local fireworks. And one Wednesday night, about 15 people with cars got together and cruised around Pottsville. And uh, it kind of grew from there uh, to at its peak. Uh, our, our top record, Jerry and I just talked about this not too long ago, uh, one perfectly weathered day, we had uh, 1,200 cars in the cruise. Did that for years till it kind of uh, outgrew itself and uh, with Market Street being route uh, uh, 209 through the city of State Highway, closing it down to do the rolling cruise just became impossible. So uh, it became a uh, park and show cruise. The Lions Club uh, ran that for many years. And as you said, uh, they raised a lot of money and gave to a lot of different community yes. projects. Yes. Uh, as most service agents, you know, service groups like that are going today, the Rotaries and Lions, uh, Kiwanis, all that stuff, you know, membership is getting older and getting fewer. 
they knew it was time to give it up. Uh, they, they knew that, you know, from being a past co-chair and being a former Lions Club member, that uh, as my position with city council uh, is public safety, I with the fire department. And they thought, what a wonderful fire, you know, what a f wonderful fundraiser for the fire department to use because of the cost of the equipment and things today. And, you know, uh, I know Rob will probably tell you a little bit about that and what it costs to do. I know it from a city standpoint because we try and help as much as we can. But Is there a budget for the fire department? Yes, the city does have a budget for the fire department. Uh, it's, it's substantial. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I, I can proudly say is uh, my, my chief, Chief Jim Mistician, has uh, really worked hard at every year the, the staying within a budget. He's even found outside sources to bring in. Uh, we cover for a couple different communities around us and they pay us for our, our services. Uh, not a lot, but you know, it's, it's you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna run and help anyway. That's what volunteer firemen do. Exactly. If they called for our help, it's just now they also uh, because of state funding are able to give a little bit back to Pottsville. And Jim's been great at finding those things. Uh, so they knew it would be a great offer. I came to the department. They were a little nervous and hesitant. Sure. And uh, eventually, the humane folks contacted me and said we want to take that on and uh, it was uh, it was a magnificent day and a great fundraiser. So, tell me about that day How, what happened that day here with the cruise? Boy that day you know we moved at Sam from Center Street up here to Laurel Boulevard and some people questioned it uh, the different location and once they seen the the width of the street because you know where Center Street's two lane with you know parking on the sides this is four lanes wide with parking on the sides so uh, very early, we said we were going to be opening, uh, opening to let people in. It was a one to five show. We said we'd start parking them at about you know, 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Well, 9.30 in the morning, they started lining up from all over. I mean, the first guy in line was from Wilkes-Barre, PA. Uh, said it was his thing. He liked to be to car shows first. But uh, we eventually packed five blocks of both sides of the street, over 200 cars which for a first time host is one you know great accomplishment uh, and there and the you know the, the town turned out other car people turned out it was just a great great day we had uh, where, where we're sitting actually i had met some people that had a a very very well done ghostbusters mobile oh. so the humane put one of their old fire trucks out for the kids and we parked the ghostbuster mobile here for the kids and uh, <laughs> We had vendors down the side, firehouse food. Yeah. Uh, as a car show goes, yeah. it was it was 100% great conditions. Yeah, and you see, and uh, the thing I like about the car shows is, and you had a beautiful day. It couldn't be better for you because it wasn't that really hot. You had some breeze. It was a, a wonderful day. Uh, it's bringing the people together, you know, in, in the, not only here, but you know, you're covering, like you said, from Wilkesbury in those different areas. They come here and they have a good time. They see the cars. Uh, knowing, yeah, I guess the money is important, yes, but you know, you still want to live and you want to enjoy yourself. And right. I think you saw a lot of that, didn't you? Oh, we did. Uh, you know, the guys here, you know, it, it was funny. You know, here it is like 1130. We're technically, or, you know, by our own postings, you know, not open yet. And uh, I'm, I'm walking around, you know, because I want to see their reaction. Uh, and there were nothing but big smiles yeah, going, yeah. this is crazy. This yeah. is, I said, wait, it's early. And <laughs> as they continued to file in, uh, you know, their smiles got bigger. And uh, even though at, the, you know, at that point, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing numbers in my head going, okay, if we get this many cars, we <laughs> walk with at least this much money. Yeah. You yeah. know, because, you know, and again, right, Rob will tell you about this, but just, just the gear for one fireman, to meet all the standards they have to meet is well over two thousand dollars, and you know most of our guy you know, companies are fortunate enough to run with uh, you know a minimum of six guys on a call, sometimes less during the day, but still, you know, you take four guys, that's eight thousand dollars, and you want to make sure that they equipped, as they said, with the best. But you hear some people think, um, and I would think the same thing. Well. You know, the, the, the taxpayer dollars are paying for that, 
and you do have a budget. That's why I ask if there's a budget. So where does that, where does it go over and beyond where, you know, you can only do so much to tax, you know, the, the public as much as you can? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we, we've been very, you know, in, in every department, I must say, in the city of Pottsville, you know, we stay pretty mindful to that stuff. You know, we know not, none of us like to say tax increase, uh, but sometimes it's, it's just business, as, as hard as that sounds, yes. it just is. Yeah. Uh, so we, you know, we work hard at keeping those things under control. Uh, the fire department uh, is probably one of the, the smaller budget line items, considering as much as they do and you know, as many calls as our department runs. This department in the city of Pottsville runs well over 1,200 calls a year. And they do everything from a residential fire to you know business and industry fires, car accidents. Uh, we've had this year in the city of Pottsville three building collapses that our department, I'm proud to say, is equipped and trained enough to be able to go and do that in small town Pottsville, PA. Uh, all of all that stuff costs money to do, and yet you know, at the drop of a hat, a volunteer fireman's right. off and running. Why do you and the volunteers that I see, they're always so upbeat, you know, you've always, I've never seen you down, even when you, when you want to be down, you're not down. Why do you do it? Well, you know, it, I, I think it, it, it's, it's part of how I was raised. Uh, I do it because this is this is my hometown, you know. I'm of, of a generation that remembers, you know, neighborhoods, you know, where you walked across the street and you sat on the porch step, uh, and 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 enjoying the people that come out and see these events is kind of what drives me. I like being able to walk down the street knowing that I played a small part in organizing the event and and talk to the people who are there enjoying it you know and then sharing stories uh, and then then I know the bottom line is we're doing this event for a very worthwhile cause when it was with the Lions it was everything from the library SPCA city fireworks you know if, if there was a cause we were into it uh, and I know being a volunteer fireman I'm I'm a volunteer fireman in the city of Pottsville since I'm 21 uh, I know what it costs to run a run a firehouse and I knew from the crews why it would work so well for the department or for a company, in this case, the Humane, uh, with things that are, are really expensive to take care of. I mean, you know, these guys, we have mountains around us. You know, most of my department here in town has now vehicles that they can access those roads. And with the popularity of ATVs, we do a lot of rescues on that in different areas, because again, the department here has found ways to raise money for the equipment they need to respond to those events. You know, this is something that you don't plan overnight, my friends. Uh, you know, working with uh, Dave and Jerry Enders for many years uh, on the cruise, I know uh, they, it's, it's a year-long event. I mean, it's a, a year-long in planning. There's a lot of strategic things that, you know, are, are involved with a car cruise. It just doesn't happen, all right, we're going to have a Saturday, everyone show up, you know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we met faithfully here at least once a month. We juggled schedules a lot. You know, uh, people here coaching minor league, you know, little league baseball stuff and, you know, other, other family things throughout, throughout the year. But we always found a, a joint time to get together so we could sit down and, you know, keep the wheels turning, not, not have to come down to a last minute, oh my goodness, we forgot. And there's a couple of things we did, but we smoothed it out. Uh, and that, that'll be part of our next meeting, the little tweaks that sure, we'll make for yeah, next yeah. year. So. Uh, before I go to break and bring Robin, uh, the money that you're going to raise, or you've already raised from the car crews in that event, do, do you have it earmarked for anything? Uh, I know Rob and I were just talking earlier. Uh, they've been reviewing some of their, their firemen's gear and realizing, you know, it's, some of it's starting to age out by date and uh, that's where the mass of the money is going to go. Uh, I also know, uh, again, you know, keeping up with regulations and things. Uh, I happen to know that some of their hose here was recently deemed a little bit old. So, uh, you know, the last thing you need to be is hooked to a fire hydrant and have a hose burst on you. So I know they're going to do a little bit of investment that way to bring that all up to date and, you know, up to code. So. Uh, 
They've, and, they've got a plan, yeah. Sam. And that's where it goes back to, as I'm saying to the, our friends, that it's important that when you have events like this, you hope you never need them. And I hope you never have to call a fire department or whatever or get in an accident. But God forbid it should happen. Once again, you want to make sure they're coming with the best equipment, the best qualified people, and the training. And we're going to talk to Rob Lynn, who is the captain. He'll let you know as to what is the training, what's all involved in this. It's just not a fire, a fire department, but there's a lot more involved. I want to congratulate you, Dave Clues, for you know your continuous uh, volunteering and, and what you've done. You, you've, you've affected thousands of lives, you and your whole crew, Jerry with his uh, car, and all the, all the, I don't know all the names, but I know the faces. Uh, it was just, it's just a great thing that you do. Thank you, I, I appreciate that. Folks, we're gonna take a break. Uh, we're here at the Humane Fire Department. Beautiful day, <clears throat> have our sunglasses on today. It's very seldom the way we wear sunglasses, uh, but um, we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Sancho, folks. I'm here in downtown Pottsville, beautiful sunny day in front of the Humane Firehouse, and we're talking about uh, the funds that were raised uh, with the car crews. Uh, but I want to remember, I want you to remember that we're on 24/7 um, SSPTV.com, YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, and all the other social media. All of our local shows uh, in Pottsville, in the greater Pottsville area, we're on Comcast 190 from 7 to 11 p.m. every day. We've been on here for over 20 some years. Uh, in Hazleton, of course, on Service Electric Cable Vision, we're on 24 7, uh, 513, our HD channel and channel 13. And in the Wilkesbury area on Service Electric Communications, we've been there many, many years as well, every Saturday and Sunday evening from 7 to 11 p.m. So, um, you know, and, and my email is sam at ssptv.com. Appreciate the comments uh, that you're sending to me. I really do. We're here at the, as I said, the Humane Firehouse, and just recently they had a car cruise uh, for a fundraiser. And sitting with me now, uh, Rob Lynn, who is the captain. He was on the other show. Uh, congratulations on a great job you guys did. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. It went very been, well. Yeah, I understand that. Rob, I opened the show and talked about, you know, uh, I, I would hope that no one ever needs a call you. Okay, right. um, that's when you have, you know, some some trouble. If you have, um, for example, an accident, you know, you guys are there. Right. Let's go back to what does the, you know, what does your fire department do? You know, what, what's re, what do you need? What, you know, the training of your people and why it's so important to have the best. Right. We will, we have two rolling toolboxes behind us here. Yeah. And that's, I like to call them toolboxes because there's, we could get into houses. Um, we could disconnect car batteries with them, um, but the, the money that we acquired for the from the crews be going to firefighting gear, okay. which is one of the things that we need the most right. here. So talk me through, okay, God forbid you should get a, a fire alarm comes in, someone calls in, I have a fire, okay. How, what happens then? What, how does the, 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 the volunteers get involved? How quickly you get to the home? Everybody, everybody gets a page. Um, either Alpha Pager or through their cell phones now, and come to the station or go to the scene, and we'll be out the door within two and a half minutes. Is that right? Yes. And so, you, how many people do you have here at the firehouse? Well, they'll, it's volunteers, so they'll all volunteers yeah, come in. Every, so, in other words, you have a, a driver then who, t who takes the trucks out. Truck, yep. Uh, staffed. Um, usually get four to five guys in one truck okay. and we're off and gone. So you're looking at volunteers now, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, does that detain the amount of time that you're gonna to get to this fire or, or the accident? Because most, they, they certainly work, right? Yeah, but usually businesses, like, businesses around here let the volunteers okay. leave if, right. if there's a fire. Okay. Yeah. So how many volunteers do you have? Uh, at this station, Regular basis, about 25. What does it take to become a volunteer? What are the requirements? There's, well, you could volunteer. You, could, you don't have to be, like, you could volunteer washing the trucks or, yeah. but to, to be a firefighter, um, the state requires 188 hours of training. And where do you have that training? Up in Frackville at the fire school. Okay. And everyone has to go through the training. Is, right. is there any age restraints? Um, 
start at, I think you could start at 16. 16 you could start at. With the training, uh, and there's, you cover all the areas, right? What are some of the things that you, 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 you're learning, you learn in training? Um, force, forcible entry, how to get in, indoors, um, hose advancement into the building, um, just how to put the fire out. That, that's get, always, when you get to that's the always of the been fire. A, always a question in mind. It's okay because sometimes you know they just think the firemen come and they just start smashing things down. Right, right, right. I mean, and just get in there, and that's further but the truth, right? I mean, right. That's the uh, yeah. That's the worst thing to do. Start giving it air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how do you like you, you assess when you get? I mean, let's say let's say uh, maybe a kitchen fire, okay, right. uh, or electrical fire. Right. All right. How do you know how to detra you know, to detain that area? Well, if it's a kitchen, we'd probably grab a can and go in with the can so we're not destroying the person's house. How long does it take, you know, the, you know, God forbid a fire starts in a home, how long does it take before the fire department gets there? And what should you do if you're in the home and you have fire extinguishers, you know, to try to lessen the degree of the fire? Well, if you're in the home and you have a fire, if you have an extinguisher, maybe try and put a knock on it. If not, you have to get, get out. Best, yeah, best thing to do is get out. Yeah, and why is that? I'm, I know it's a stupid question, but tell the audience why is it that you, you know, if you have a fire extinguisher, it's not working, or if you can't, because a lot of people try to, you know, salvage what they can. Right. Why get out? It's uh, easier for us. Then we're we're not we're not going in and searching right away. You know, we know the homeowner met us on on scene. They told us what they got, yeah. and then we could go in and quickly extinguish the, the fire. Children, pets, and when do most uh, fires, I know it can happen anytime, but when do most fires happen? Is it summer, spring, winter, fall, uh, and nighttime? That's, yeah, know. that's a good question. Um, I would say coming up, like the, going in the winter time, fall, winter time, usually at nighttime. Yeah. Um, because it's uh, heating units are starting to go on, we'll start going on, uh, be going on. So yeah, usually around fall, winter, and then at nighttime. All right. Now I know um, in Hazelton that we have a great fire chief, as you know, Lesko, uh, and he has been on many times telling people to get fire alarms. Okay? Yes. And it's, why is it so critical? And, and, and sometimes fire departments give them out. Sometimes right, they're, right. they're very inexpensive. Do you, do you give a fire? Yes, we do. Yeah, if you'd call City Hall, um, contact the chief, and we'll go. Your and, fire chief? Yes, and yes. we'll go and install smoke Folks, alarms. Folks, let me yeah. tell you, I mean, if you don't have to uh, install, because that's my problem, installing them, <laughs> uh, get a fire uh, alarm. Uh, the, I mean, it could literally save your life. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, seconds mean a lot. Yeah, from your experience, uh, Rob, um, you know um, this firehouse. How how do you rate the equipment, uh, the training of the men and women um, for the uh, humane firehouse? Top notch. Yeah. Top notch. You said that just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and I, I I would agree with you. Okay. And here again, you you know, you remember, folks, these people put their lives on the line. I mean, you don't know what you're going to get into, uh, and they're in there, and we know this story of many times firemen have been, they got killed or they smoke inhalation or whatever the case may be. I'm sure you guys are always very careful, but you never know. You, right. you have to take those chances, especially if, if there's children upstairs in a bed or whatever, you know. Have you ever encountered any of those serious yes, situations? Sir. Yeah, it, it must, uh, must, a lot of things must go through your head. Right, right. Uh, well, I'm glad to see that, um, you know, Dave Clues and, and you guys got together and decided to have the fundraiser because I know, once again, I'm going to reiterate this. People think, well, there's a budget, they get paid for that. Yes, but there's always stuff that you need that you can't keep on going back and right. saying, we need more money. Well, that means the people have to pay more taxes. You know, right. it doesn't make sense to me. Um, were you pleased with the, uh, the cruise? Absolutely. Absolutely. Looking forward to next year. Is that right? August 13th. Okay. 2022. Now, here's the deal, my friends. They had a fundraiser, and it was important to raise money. However, sometimes you may want to say, you know, I'd like to make a donation to the firehouse, and I'm sure 
they will accept any kind of donation uh, just to help people out. And how, if someone wants to make a donation, what are they? Yeah, do? it could be either monetary or even drink. Like summer, it's summertime. Yeah. Uh, we take bottled water, Gatorade, Powerade. Just drop it off at the station. So, in other words, someone makes a check for fifty bucks, they can make it out to Humane Fire. Humane Fire Company. Fire Company. It's a great opportunity for do that. Uh, uh, my grand, my father-in-law was a fireman uh, for many, many years. It just recently passed, and uh, I have, the, of course, our whole family had the greatest respect for what you people do. You know, and it's uh, it's a lot of work. You you, you give your talent. You give them sometimes your life you know and i hope that never happens here but i wish you guys the best thank you sam okay rob lynn folks he's a captain here it's all volunteer uh it's the humane firehouse uh fire company uh they can always certainly lose your help uh and i hope for any with all, all their sakes you never ever have to call them we'll see you next time